Greetings, everybody. Learning as a hobby here. Uh, I want to go over um, the solutions for the exercise sets in uh, John Stilwell's book, Elements of Number Theory, uh, in this video. Uh, I posted the, the section summaries for section 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4 on the channel uh, a few minutes ago, so you should be able to watch those. And then these are the solution sets for those sections. All right. And then uh, hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to post the rest of the, the videos for chapter one so we can finish up chapter one in here. Um, so let me bring up my solutions to the exercise sets and we'll go over them. All right, starting in section 1.1. Okay, um, so he says before question one, uh, not only is the sequence of primes without apparent pattern, there is not even a known simple formula that produces only primes. There are, however, some interesting near misses. So check here, he says, check that the quadratic function n squared plus n plus 41 is prime for all small values of n, say for n up to 30. I actually went a little bit further than that. You'll see why I did that in a minute. Um, so here I, I just, like I said, I evaluated the expression n squared plus n plus 41, where n was went from 1 all the way up to 41. So these are the values. You just plug the numbers in. It's nothing, you know, nothing fancy. I just plugged the numbers in and figured out what the, the values were, all right? So it turns out that all of these are prime until you get up to n equals 40. So from n equals 1 all the way up to 39, the output of that expression is prime. So um, 43 is prime, 47 is prime, et cetera, et cetera. 173 is prime, uh, even six, all the way up to 1601. All those numbers are prime until you get up to 40. And you'll see why that that's not prime in a minute. <clears throat> right, so that's the answer to question 1.1.1. So 1.1.2 says, show nevertheless that n squared plus n plus 41 is not prime for certain values of n. There's an easy value to see that for, for example, if you plug n equals 41 in, obviously this is not a prime number because each um, because each uh, term in the sum has a common factor of 41. So the product, you can write it, the, the sum as the product 41 times 43, which is not equal to the the value of the sum itself, which is 1763. So this number is not prime. Uh, but even worse, uh, with he, in the next question, number three, he says, which is the smallest such value? It turns out that actually 40, when you plug n equals 40 into that, that, that expression, you get a composite number as well. It turns out being a perfect square, actually. So if you take 40 squared plus 40 plus 41 and simplify, you get 41 squared. So the smallest number that you get from this expression that's not prime is this number here, 1681. So, it, but it works for every natural number up until uh, 39. So from one to 39, which is kind of neat. Uh, I remember seeing this um, this uh, expression in the proof workshop I took as an undergraduate a long time ago, uh, which I, I just found it kind of neat that this function works for so many values of n uh, giving you primes, but anyway, uh, those are the solutions to the problems in section 1.1, right? The the exercise sets are kind of short because the sections themselves are kind of short. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm doing a bunch of them at once. All right, section 1.2. Uh, exercise solutions, my solutions. Uh, an interesting process of descent may be seen in the algorithm for the so-called Egyptian fractions introduced by Fibonacci in 1202. The goal of the algorithm is to represent any fraction A over B with, uh, and again, there's a typo here. Let me just fix this so I don't have something incorrect written. Uh, I, I apologize for these typos. I must have been in a rush when I was writing these notes up, but So this should be, sorry, just bear with me for a second. Um, a less than B. Okay, so for any fraction A over B with a uh, with zero le less than A less than B as a sum of distinct terms one over N called unit fractions. The ancient Egyptians represented fractions in this way. Uh, Fibonacci's algorithm in a nutshell is to repeatedly subtract the largest possible unit, unit fraction applied to the fraction 11 over 12. So we'll do an example here. It yields 
So let's go through the process here. 11 over 12 uh, minus one half, which is the largest unit fraction you can subtract from it, uh, gives you five over 12. And for five over 12, you can subtract one third, which is the, the largest uh, unit fraction that you can take from five over 12. Uh, and when you do that subtraction, you actually get a unit fraction, one over 12, which means that 11 over 12 can be written as one half plus one third plus one over 12. Um, and then he says, it turns out that the fractions produced by the successive subtractions always have a descending sequence of numerators. In the example we just did, the, the numerators went from 11 to 5 to 1. Hence, they must term necessarily terminate with 1. And he wants us to do an example of that ourselves in the next question. So use Fibonacci's algorithm to find an Egyptian representation of 9 over 11. All right? It's just a calculation. So uh, this is you know, the calculation I did. 9 over 11, you could subtract a half from it, which gives you 7 over 22. Uh, from 7 over 22, you can subtract a fourth, which gives you 6 over 88, which you can reduce to 3 over 44. And then you can subtract 1 over 15 from 3 over 44, which itself gives you a unit fraction, 1 over 660. And uh, just putting all that together, you get that 9 over 11 then is equal to a half plus a quarter plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 660. Right. So it's just, a, like I said, just a calculation using Fibonacci's uh, algorithm. Right. And in the next problem, he wants us to prove that Fibonacci's algorithm works. Uh, if A, B, and Q are natural numbers with 1 over Q plus 1 less than B over A less than 1 over Q, show that B over A minus 1 over Q plus 1 is B prime divided by A times Q plus 1, where 0 is strictly less than B prime is strictly less than B. Hence, explain why Fibonacci's algorithm always works. So before I show you my proof here, let me just, uh, I just want to make a note about something, whoops, a uh, note about something here real quick. This was actually proven, whoops, <clears throat> this was actually proven by the mathematician Sylvester in the 19th century. So this was first proved by Sylvester in uh, the 1880s, I think. Uh, and it can be proven by with a proof by mathematical induction. I chose not to do a proof by mathematical induction here. And, and that's because he says, explain why it works. Uh, now, for proofs by induction, there's nothing wrong with a proof by induction. It shows that the, you know, the statement holds for all natural numbers. But in general, proofs by induction don't usually give you any insight as to why the, the statement is true. So I did a uh, different proof here uh, rather than do a proof by induction. So let me go through how I did this. Uh, hopefully this will illustrate uh, more, um, I don't know, it'll give you more insight as to why it works. So, uh, so here's the proof. So we're gonna start by assuming this. So assume that this is true. All right, so one over Q plus one less than B minus A, uh, sorry, B over A uh, implies that zero is less than B over A minus one over Q plus one, which when you simplify gives you uh, the fraction B plus Q, BQ minus A over A times Q plus one. So here B prime would be the number B plus BQ minus A. Uh, now there's a couple of important things to notice here. Notice that this fraction is positive, therefore B prime has to be positive. All right, so we, we already know that uh, B prime is greater than zero. So we just have to show that it's less than B. And the way that we can do that is by using the other part of the inequality. So B over A is less than one over Q implies that BQ minus A is less than zero. Or in other words, um, you're subtracting a, a negative number from B. You still get a positive number though. So uh, zero is less than B prime, which is less than B from that fact. Okay, since the sequence of numbers are decreasing and always positive, that means that the sequence must eventually terminate in a finite number of steps by the, the well-ordering property of the natural numbers, right? There's a least element. Furthermore, we could say that the least uh, numerator that you get has to be one, since otherwise, uh, if let's say that, there, that um, one was less than bn, so say that the smallest numerator that you end up with is some number that's strictly greater than one then you derive a contradiction here. Then uh, one, that would mean that one over uh, A over Q plus one is less than BN over A time, times Q plus one. Here, uh, the, the denominator that you may end up with for BN uh, may not be the, the, you know, the denominator that you started with uh, over here. Uh, 
but I'm just using this property. You could always do this. Um, and so, you know, just assuming that this is the, the denominator that you get in the last step, let's say, um, then, you know, this, this fraction will be less than this fraction, if this is true, right? Uh, that implies that zero is less than B sub N over A times Q plus one minus one over A times Q plus one. That's a positive difference. Um, and if you um, simplify here, you know, put over the LCD, you get BN minus one is uh, uh, BN minus one over A times Q plus one uh, is, shows that zero is greater than is less than bn minus one. And notice this is also less than bn, but that's a contradiction, right? That contradicts the fact that bn was the smallest such numerator. So that, that shows that it has to terminate with a numerator of one, right? Um, so like I said, you could do this with induction, but I, I just thought that this gives you a little bit more insight as to why it works. Okay. All right, next section, 1.3, uh, a concrete problem similar to describing 4m plus 7n, which was an example we did in the in the section, so you should take a look at that video if you haven't seen it, uh, is uh, what he calls the McNuggets problem. Given that McNuggets can be bought in quantities of 6, 9, or 20, which numbers of McNuggets can be bought? This is the problem describing the numbers 6i plus 9j plus 20k for natural numbers, or 0ijk. It turns out that the possible numbers include all numbers uh, greater than or equal to 44 and some irregular set of numbers less than 43, right? So, so a bunch of questions he's going to ask us about this. So 1.3.1, explain why the number uh, 43 is not obtainable. So that's what I did here. So uh, 6i plus 9j plus 20k, I can rewrite in a more convenient way. So uh, you can write this like this. Um, and I want to set that equal to 43. So if this is equal to 43, then the possible values for K, right? That's the, K is the, the number you're multiplying 20 by. K can only be possibly zero, one, or two, because past two, then um, you get more, you'll, you'll have to get more than 43 um, McNuggets, right? You can't, it, it, the numbers will be too large, right? You'll get starting at 60 McNuggets, right? And you're not allowed to subtract off here. So these, these are all the only possible values for K. So I just go through the cases. So if K is zero, that would mean that three times two I plus three J is equal to 43. However, 43 is a prime no number. And this would, if this were true, this would say that three divides 43, which is not true. It's a contradiction. Okay, so that so k equals zero is not a possibility. If k equals one, then you get three is equal. Uh, sorry, three times two i plus three j is equal to twenty three. But you run into the same problem. Twenty three is prime. Uh, but this statement here, if if it were true, would say that three divides twenty three. That's a contradiction, right? Uh, and lastly, if k equals two, which would exhaust all the cases, then three. Um, times 2i plus 3 uh, plus 3j equals 3, which would mean that 2i plus 3j is equal to 1, which is impossible for ij greater than or equal to 0. So there's no way to get 1 as uh, you know a sum of this form where i and j have to be natural numbers. So that exhausts all the possible cases for k, which means there's no way to do this. So there's no way to represent um, 43 in as a number of that form, uh, provided that ij and k are not um, allowed to be integers, but they have to be natural numbers. Okay, next question. Show that each of the numbers 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49 is obtainable, which I do down here. You just find the numbers that work. So I won't really go into detail about that. You just find the numbers, all right? So here I've done that. I've represented all of those numbers as a sum of that form. All right, question 1.3.3, deduce from exercise 1.3.2 that any number greater than 43 is obtainable. And this is a similar argument to what we did in the chapter for that that problem for, uh, what was it, 4m plus 7n or something. Or something. Um, so for any number, here's my solution. Any number n greater than 49 is congruent modulo 6 to one of those numbers there, 45, for, uh, 44, or 45, 46, et cetera, et cetera. Therefore, we can obtain any number greater than 43 by adding a natural number multiple of six to one of the elements in the sets above. Uh, so that shows you can write any number greater than uh, 49 um, in that form. 
All right, so here, next problem, but if the negative quantity is negative six, negative nine, and negative 20 are allowed, say by selling McNuggets back, then any integer number of McNuggets can be obtained. So here, in other words, he's saying, if you can use integers instead of just natural numbers, show that uh, you can get any number of McNuggets, All right? So um, here, notice that, uh, so here's the next question. Sorry, 1.3.4. Show in fact that 1 equals 9m plus 20n for some integers m and n. I just found the number. So 9 times 9 plus 20 times minus 4 gives you 1. In other words, 81 minus 80 gives you 1. Okay, uh, 1.3.5. Deduce from exercise 1.3.4 that every integer is expressible in the form 9m plus 20n for some integers m and n. So using the fact that you can write 1 as a, a sum of that form, then you just, if you want to represent the number, the integer k, uh, in that form, you just multiply that first equation through by k, and that tells you what to pick. So you would choose m to be n times uh, 9 times k, and n to be negative 4 times k, and that'll give you whatever number you want. As long as it's an integer, right? <laughs> All right, uh, question 1.3.6, is it is uh, every integer expressible in the form 6m plus 9n? What do the results in exercise 1.3.4 and 1.3.5 have to do with the common divisor? All right, so here's my answer. So 6m plus 9n, notice, uh, can always be written as 3 times 2m plus 3n, uh, you know, as long as m and n are integers. Um, any, Which means that any number expressible in the form 6m plus 9n must be a multiple of 3. Okay, you can't get any number that's not a multiple of three as a sum of that form. So any number numbers expressible as a linear combination of a finite number of integers must be a multiple of their GCD. That's what the the problems here that he referred to tell have to do with common divisors. Uh, I actually also kind of mentioned this in passing in the section summary. So again, you should look at that if you if you haven't seen the section summaries yet. All right, last uh, problem set for section 1.4. So 1.4.1 says use a calculator or computer, um, sorry, using a calculator or computer, use the method above to find the remainder when, uh, by above, he means in the section itself. Um, find the remainder when one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is divided by three, 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 three. Uh, you just using the, you know, the division algorithm that he has in the section, that's what I did. So, uh, you know, using a calculator, right? So divide, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by three, 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 three. Then take the um, the integer part, which is three thousand seven hundred and four, uh, and subtract it from uh, three, 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 three times that number. Subtract it from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That gives you the remainder. So here you can see that the quotient is thirty seven oh four, and the remainder is two forty six. Okay. Next question is similar. Uh, calculate the multiples of 300, 3,333 on either side of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So all you do is subtract one from the quotient in the previous problem and add one to the quotient to the previous problem. And that gives you uh, the multiples on either side of the number that we found that we are interested in in this, the previous section. So 3,333 times 3703 gives you uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 0, 9, 9, and 3333 3, 3 times 3705 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 7, 6, 5. So these are the multiples of 3033 on either side of the, the number that we had over here. And that's it. That's, uh, oh, uh, Oh, right. This is the, the next section. I, I've already done all the, the exercises from chapter one. So actually in this video, I'm going to stop here because I don't want to go over the exercise uh, problems before I go over the, the actual sections in the textbook. So let me stop my screen share. Uh, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I do have a few more videos coming up, hopefully in, in the near future uh, on the channel. I know it's been a while, but that's because I've been focusing on work and, and the Patreon page. Uh, but again, if you could do me a favor and take a look at the Patreon page, see if you're interested in becoming a member. Uh, it is only $5 a month. So it's like, a you know, you're buying me a cup of coffee every month and you get a bunch of stuff for that. So uh, if you could just go to the Patreon page, which I'll leave a link to in the description bar below. Uh, there's also a link to it in the, the channel banner uh, as well, if you click on that um, and see if you're interested. Um, and if you are, then uh, I'm happy to have you aboard. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, I'm going to be posting. Let's see, what do I got coming up on here? Because I, I know it's been a while since I posted. I got to get 
uh, around to the uh, exercises for the that section in Taylor that I did, which which was I think two point is it two point two or two point three? I forget now. Um, I also have to get back to uh, the last section in uh, the Simmons book in the differential equations book. I got chapter two coming up in linear algebra done right. I got uh, <laughs> uh, chapter five. We're going to start on the Spivak book, which is uh, exciting because that's the, the beginning of the calculus material. And also I, I want to finish up chapter one in uh, Schifrin's multivariable mathematics book. So I got a lot coming up in, in the future. Keep an eye out for that stuff, guys. I'll see you in the next one. And until that time, uh, keep learning.